Broncos fans and welcome inside Felton J. Capel Arena. It is uh, back in session. Classes are back in session on campus and uh, first serve is on the way as the fall athletic schedule gets underway in just a couple of days with the start of Bronco Volleyball. I'm Andrew Chapman joined by the head coach of the Broncos, Rashima Johnson, alongside one of the stars of the team this year. It's Cassandra Watson on the Above the Net show, first of many in the 2022 season. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time and, and obviously a lot of anticipation here over the next few days as we get ready for the start of a new season. Yes. Broncos are conference champions back-to-back -back years, so uh, of course uh, time to try and keep the streak going. But, but, but the coach, uh, you know, leading up to these first few days uh, in, into the start of the regular season, just how much anticipation is there now? You guys have, of course, been conditioning, practicing, and now first uh, first match is just a couple days away. Where's the excitement at right now? I think it's on 10. Yeah. <laughs> it's on 10 right now. Everybody's tired of practicing. Everybody's ready to get started with playing. You know, so that anticipation is really high and you know just coming in as back-to-back -back defending champions mm -hmm. we understand that we have a target on our backs and so we know that we have to be you know just prepared um, for the assault that's about to come because everybody's trying to take us down at this point no no <laughs> no doubt uh, the Broncos last season they won 10 in a row they swept the conference tournament going all the way to the regional round and again back-to-back -back championships and, and Cassandra your junior year now uh, we'll mm -hmm. see at the outside hitter position primarily this year and mm -hmm. and just going back to last Last year, you know, what were some of your favorite memories of, of that run you guys went on towards the back end of the conference schedule and then all the way through to the uh, to the tournament celebrating at the end? Well, honestly, we didn't do so well in our first uh, uh, CIAA roundup. Mm -hmm. And I remember Coach telling us, like, we need to do better. Like, we need to take the steps to be the champions again. And, you know, I think that moment really changed everybody and everybody's mindset, mm -hmm. I would say. So the next roundup, I believe we went 3-0. and We swept everybody. And that was, you know, just the drive that we needed. And it just took us to where we needed to go. How much fun is it as a coach to watch that run in, in the postseason when you almost just get to step back a little bit and know that your team's firing on all cylinders and you just watch your girls out there having fun and, and playing hard? And, and that, was, that was something special about last season is that mm -hmm. I was able to sit back and watch them do what they did. Mm -hmm. um, especially after that roundup, like she said, you know, we had one of them little come to Jesus moments. <laughs> and um, when we lost to St. Andrews at their place, whoo! You know, we kind of had to step back and look within ourselves. And I think after that one, definitely, you know, with compounded with the roundup losses and everything, their whole demeanor changed, their whole attitude changed. And I didn't have to be the one pushing them anymore. Right. You know, they were pushing themselves. Mm -hmm. They were holding themselves accountable. They were hungry. Mm -hmm. And so that was just so exciting to watch. That internal motivation, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. You know, you, you win you back-to-back win -back conference championships, and like you said, so there's a little bit of a target on your back yes. for all the other teams in the conference to try and take you down. Uh, but from you know the recruiting aspect and, and building the team this year and then in the future, you know what do you think winning conference championships like that does for the Fayetteville State brand and, and does for players around the area and, and wanting to you know eventually play for for this program? Um. It, it builds interest, it mm -hmm. really does, because everybody wants to be a champion, right? Everybody likes to win. Um, and so I had lots of interest from, you know, local players who wanted to stay home and wanted to be a part of the Bronco family, mm -hmm. people who had been coming to our, you know, our summer camps mm -hmm. over the past couple of years who mm -hmm. just, you know, they just love Fayetteville State and wanted to be a part of it. But even beyond that, outside of the, the, the city, outside of the state, there were people who were like, you know, throughout the season were saying, you know, hey, that was a great win, or, you know, yeah. hey, you'll bounce. They were actually actively following us as a team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was as we were, you know, building it up. They loved watching us on the court. They thought the chemistry with the girls was mm -hmm. great. They, you know, they loved the fact that we were winning. And they just wanted to be a part of the program. Mm -hmm. They reached out wanting to be a part of the program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and no doubt now, you know, a, a year after that, that team that came together and won the championship, there is a little bit of a, a chemistry <laughs> change. 
change. There's been some big departures from mm -hmm. the program, so uh, you know it's it's next person up in, in that sense. And you know, Denisha Miller is, is one of those girls that's no longer with the program. Uh, Kaylee Vanderhorst, also one of the top mm -hmm. point scorers, has has moved on. And, and of course now, you know, Cassandra, those, those are bigger shoes for you to fill and kind of step up into that that next role. But how do you think the uh, the girls have come together at this point in the year? New look team. Where's the chemistry at at the moment heading into the start of the season? Um, so we recently just had a team bonding and like we had great moments we sat down and we thought about our goals for the season individual and as a team and we sat down and we went around you know a circle and we just talked about it and I told the girls I said now think about these goals and I also told them to bring something like that reminds them of their happiest moment mm -hmm. or you know that reminds them of their why I said now add those goals into your why and that's why you're playing that's why you're here so whenever you feel like discouraged you know um, you can think about that so I feel like all in all that brought it together and so the team chemistry is building and it's going to continue to build mm -hmm. so we only have time and it'll get better with right. time. You mentioned uh, you know the girls putting together team goals and then some individual mm -hmm. goals uh, care to share any, <laughs> any of your individual goals uh, going into this season? Um, my, t my individual goals were to be a better leader like mm -hmm. you said fill in those shoes of Denisha Miller um, all the all the seniors of yeah. last year. Um, I do feel like I need to have more of a fire to me um, and I want to kind of you know continue that legacy you know that mm -hmm. everybody has you know left for me to continue. Yeah. Coach you've, you've had some transfers come in um, and of course the graduates like we mentioned what would you say is the, the early identity of the team right now is it kind of a younger group or uh, a, a more experienced group what would you say just right now is the identity of the team? It's a younger group uh -huh. um, because Cass, even though she's a senior in the classroom, you're, mm -hmm. she's only going to be a junior on the court. Right. You know, that COVID year that nobody played. So um, even my girls who will be leaving this year, apart from Iana, they've only been on the court. This will be their third year. They've mm -hmm. only been on the court two years. So it's a fairly young team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What we have going for us is that they were still a part of at least one championship. So they have that experience right. under their belt. And they know what's expected going forward. Mm -hmm. um, adding or transfers in at the beginning it was real rough and shaky you know um, you know they were like they weren't sure what to expect coming in yeah. my younger girls weren't used to leading stepping up and being the leaders on the mm -hmm. team because they had you know they had Kaylee they had Denisha they had Ashlyn they mm -hmm. had Jazz you know to, 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 to pull them and now without them they were kind of like oh wait yeah. It's us, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and so they kind of had to grow into that role and I see them growing into that role And so I'm really proud of them, but I also wanted to say something you mentioned Denisha's um, shoes being really um, big to fill but Cass was uh, um, uh, What's that freshman? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, but you, weren't you like the freshman, CIAA, of, the year? Yeah. freshman yeah. of the year? Freshman of the year, so first, you know first she first year CIAA, uh, first year in the program. She needs yeah, to no, fill her own no shoes die. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a, she needs to step up to her own potential at mm -hmm. this point. Yeah. Um, and Denisha, even though she has graduated, she's still with us. She's going to be my graduate assistant. Mm -hmm. So um, she likes to say, you know, same team, different jersey. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, we, we'll still have at least her input and her contribution, mm -hmm. her leadership yeah. going forward. Who else do you have with you on the, the sidelines this year that we'll see a part of your coaching staff? Okay, so my assistant, Jeanette, who's been with me for about the past 10 plus years, she'll be back. Mm -hmm. But I also have Alicia Ortiz. She joined us about midway last season, mm -hmm. but she was a Part of our program before she was a part of our program 2017 and 18 I believe mm -hmm. and I think both years we went to the championship and lost um, and so she is she is here you know um, just helping to mold these young ladies because mm -hmm. um, she still understands even though we lost they understand that championship sure. mindset yeah. that Fayetteville State has and so she's here to bring that youth that energy yeah. you know all of that into the program yeah playing in so many big games I gotta say since you know your freshman year all these conference tournaments, these regional games, I, I imagine that, that helps you develop uh, uh, as a player pretty quickly, even mm -hmm. from a young underclassman age now to being an upperclassman, but uh, you probably have felt uh, the ability to deal with pressure improve a lot now that you've played in some of those big games, I'd imagine. That's for sure. Um, I definitely agree with what you said. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, honestly, it's more so of like, like you back to that team chemistry. Mm -hmm. Like without my team, I wouldn't be able to do anything yeah. because like there's no I in team. So when I have my teammates around me and we go out there, like like Coach said, with that championship mindset, mm -hmm. hungry, like 
none of the like the pressure it's it's the sides like sure. i have my team with me we're going to war we're going to win this championship yeah. that's the type of mindset that we have so yeah. well the uh, the preseason polling uh, <laughs> kind of speaks to that they, they have the broncos right now preseason polling coaches poll winning the ciaa but of course we haven't even played one match yet at this point so how do you guys weigh in much to the preseason polling stuff or do you try not to uh, pay too much attention not that? really you know yeah. we had um i posted to our little group chat and everything and we talked about it a little bit um we don't feed into that stuff a lot. We mm -hmm. understood from the beginning that that target would be on our back, you know. Yeah. Um, and so that's our focus. Our focus is to play Fayetteville State Volleyball mm -hmm. um, and to continue along the path that we've been blazing. So mm -hmm. preseason, you know, we looked at, for instance, the fact that we only have one person <laughs> on, you know, the preseason all-conference team, which is fine because um, I've preached to them from the very beginning and they know this, you know, we don't sweat that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I told them I prefer hardware to superlatives. Hey, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's our goal. That's, that's right. our goal. They can have everything else. Yeah. We just need that hard. Yeah, you can actually touch the trophy. That's a physical, you know, thing that <laughs> thing that exists right in front of you. Um, you know, the the a lot of volleyball to play this weekend. Yeah. Four, four, four games on the road as you guys go to Pennsylvania and Cassandra. What do you think is the biggest thing the team just needs to uh, try and do over the first four games to help get established and, and get the season going on the right foot? Um, I would say just be purposeful and intentional about what we do. Mm -hmm. um, kind of take a look at what the other teams are doing, observe, and try to take on what they have and bring it back to the CIAA, like try to pick up new things sure. and, you know, expand on our, our game. But the main thing is to grow throughout those um, games. So mm -hmm. yeah, should, should be a good opportunity to test the conditioning too. Uh, I heard you guys have been doing some very early morning workouts. So you got a lot of volleyball to play in a 48 hour stretch. I guess that yes, conditioning will we do. come into effect this weekend. And then when you consider the fact that we're traveling, what, 10 hours just to get oh, there? Yeah. Oh yes, it, it's going to really test our middle um, but I think we can do it um, we're working on our conditioning or our strength we're not quite there yet mm -hmm. but um, it's something that we're working on it's a work in progress by the end of the season mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they'll be there yeah there you go it gives any good <laughs> whether they want to or not they'll be there <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys are able to nap on buses. I'm no, I'm no good sleeping oh, on yeah. buses. I, I can't. Oh, I, go. I go to sleep buses. as soon as the wheels start. Is, is that right? Oh sure man, that, that's that's a special that's a special <laughs> yeah. skill that I wish I had, and unfortunately I don't. But uh, guys, thanks so much again for joining us. We we can't wait to uh, have more of these sit downs with you. The above the net shows all volleyball season long, and first serve uh, coming up in just a, a few days from now. The team will be on the road to the Tony Banner Memorial Tournament. Palm Beach Atlantic in Northwood on August 22nd, and then the next day, August 27th, uh, Shippensburg and Clary under the two teams uh, awaiting the fates. Fayetteville State Broncos, and then first match at home, the home opener at, right here at Fayetteville State on campus is August 31st against St. Andrews at 6 o'clock mm. p.m. Thanks again so much for taking some time to join us on the Above the Net show as we get ready for the start of the 2022 Fayetteville State volleyball season. For head coach Rashima Johnson and junior outside hitter Cassandra Watson, I'm Andrew Chapman. So long, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon from Capel Arena.